everybody! Today we're talking about ancient killers in history. Y'all know I love true crime and I love history, so what's better than mixing the two together and making a video about history and murder? Historical murder. So, um, here you go. To the video! ancient killer we're talking about today is Anella of Anarahadhapura. If I mispronounce any of these names in any of these cases or basically on my channel at all, I apologize in advance. I am not Indian and if I am not of that ethnicity, I probably don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I might, I might not. It depends. So apology in advance if I mispronounce stuff. Queen Anella reigned from 47 BC to 42 BC, and she was the first queen in Sri Lankan history to have wielded meaningful power and authority, as well as the fact that she was the first female head of state in Asia. Anella initially rose to power as a consort of Chornaga, son of King Val Valagam Bahu of Anuradhapura, in her five-year reign, she poisoned her way through at least four other husbands and consorts, and eventually governed Rahajada on her own. First, she poisoned King Choranaga because she wanted her lover, Siva, a doorman, to become king, but it was a prince called Tissa who rose to power in, in the end. Um, Anola also killed Tissa, and Siva took the throne as Tissa's queen. She took a Tamil lover named Watuga, just 14 months after Tissa took the throne. King Siva was eventually poisoned as well, and then Watuga became king. As per usual, Onola poisoned him as well, and her next lover was enthroned and assumed the name Tissa. Her next lover, a Brahim advisor named Nilia, came to replace the new king Tissa after she poisoned him. And after she poisoned Nalia, she ruled as sole monarch, but only for about four months. So, Queen Anula, murderous queen of Sri Lanka. Boom. Our next ancient killer is Lu Pengli. Pengli? Liu Pengli is sometimes referred to as the world's first serial killer and was a 2nd century BC Han prince and the nephew of Emperor Jing. While there were probably other non-royal serial killers in existence, there weren't much established record on them um, at the time. Whereas with Liu, Liu Pengli, there is, supposedly. In 144 BCE, Emperor Jing made Liu Pengli the king of Zhidong, a city in pre-Buddhist China. Liu ruled as king there from 144 to 121 BCE, during which time he would gather large groups of his slaves and go out pillaging his own kingdom. Smart. Um, Liu is described in a quote as arrogant and cruel and would go out on marauding expeditions with tens of slaves or young men who were in hiding from the law murdering people and seizing their belongings for sheer sport confirmed victims exceeded a hundred and these murders were known across the kingdom so people were afraid to leave their homes at night eventually the son of one of his victims accused him to the emperor and the officials of the court requested the Liu louis pingli would uh, be executed. However, the emperor cannot bear to have his own um, his own nephew executed, and Liu Pengli was made a commoner and exiled to the county of Shenyang, now Zhushan, in Hubei province in China. In other words, Liu, P Liu Pengli basically got away with murder and probably murdered more people after he was exiled. Okay, and on to the next one, the next murderer. <sighs> I 
Our next agent killer is Locusta of Gaul. Historians don't know much about Locusta's early days, but she was born sometime in the 1st century AD. Her name ends in Of Gaul, so she must have been from there, I guess. Most sources say she was a peasant woman from the dark side of the Alps in present-day France. She somehow made her way to Rome in the mid-first century AD, carrying with her a knowledge of herbs so deadly it was coveted by the ambitious and the unscrupulous. It isn't known when or why Lacusta decided to use her knowledge of herbs to kill people. She created hundreds of extracts from many plants to dispatch her clients' enemies in new and interesting ways. Her extracts included hemlock, belladonna, nightshade, arsenic, quinine, and possibly even cyanide and opium. Lovely. She was thorough with her extracts, testing them on animals to ensure their potency, and noted what worked and what didn't, and used this to improve her poisons. This dedication to quality attracted clients, many rich and influential. Lacusta actually ended up in jail twice for her activities, but with the help of her influential clients, she managed to get out. Around 54 AD, Lacusta got a secret summons from Empress Agrippina, the fourth wife of Emperor Claudius. Her motives were clear. She wanted her son Nero, from a prior marriage, to become the Emperor of Rome. Agrippina bribed the food taster to stay out of the way, while Lacusta poisoned a batch of mushrooms that Agrippina delivered to Claudius personally, so he would not suspect. To ensure that he would die, Lacusta also poisoned, poisoned a feather that Agrippina rammed down his throat, which she claimed she did to expel whatever toxic substances he had ingested. After Claudius finally died, the 16-year-old Nero was named Emperor, and Lacusta was thrown in jail and given a death sentence. Nero, though, had his own rivals. Claudius had a son from a previous marriage named Britannicus, and he had a claim to the throne more so than Nero. Secretly, Nero ordered Locusta to, to be removed from prison and hired her to kill Britannicus. With Emperor Nero being one of her satisfied customers, Locusta enjoyed a growing reputation and wealth. The Emperor lavished her with land, money, gifts, and a full pardon for all poisoning she had been charged with over the years. Locusta was very busy with her poison for, poisoner for higher work, but she had time to open a school where she taught her students how to kill people with poison. Great school, right? Um, all of her success was ruined when finally the Roman Senate gather, gathered the nerve to condemn Nero to death in 68 AD, but decided to kill himself before they executed him. Fair. Guy probably would have done the same thing. She was no longer favored, as she was no longer favored by the Emperor, Lacusta was sentenced to death. The legend says she was killed in a very brutal way, being raped to death in an arena by a giraffe. Ouch. But this has never been confirmed and is likely just a fictitious account of her demise. And our last ancient killer of the day is Zhu Shanatir. Zhu Shanatir was a wealthy man from the Hamarite kingdom in what is now known as Yemen in the 5th century AD. He was one of the earliest recorded serial killers with, a possi with possible 20 plus victims. According to sources, he lured young boys into his home with a promise of food and money and in which he then stripped them naked and sodomized them. Awkward. He then killed them by throwing their naked bodies out of an upstory window of his home. And he was only stopped when a would-be victim stabbed him through the anus. Kind of fitting. Anyway, that was the video for today. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know any ancient killers you want me to cover in my next video. Um, click the notif uh, the bell icon to get notified every time that I upload. And uh, yeah, I will see ya.